everybody. Welcome. We are here at Gallery 31. This is my opening virtual tour uh, Instagram Live. This is my first Instagram Live. I'm happy to have you joining me today. We just literally straightened the last picture, so we're ready to go. Um, I'm really happy to uh, be here, and what I would like to do today is uh, welcome you and kind of take you on a tour of the gallery. I have almost 50 paintings here, just a few under 50, and I want to tell you a little bit about my uh, inspiration for uh, how I work and really what's kept me painting seascapes for the last 12 years. I started painting waves about 12 years ago, and I get a lot of questions about uh, what, what, what motivates me to want to keep painting this subject. and. So I've been thinking about that. I was thinking about that as I was driving down today. And so I wanna talk a little bit about that. I can talk about technique. Um, I have my trusty cameraman here with me, Mike Petralia, and he's monitoring questions. So we, I am happy to answer questions and he's gonna relay them to me as we go along. So feel free to put any questions in the comment bar. Uh, this is kind of how we roll now with the situation we're in now. I wish you were here with me in the gallery, but I'm actually happy to have more people being able to have access to this because we're able to do this on Instagram Live. So please feel free to chime in with any questions if you have some. So um, what I wanted to tell you about my obsession, with, which really is, it is fair to call it an obsession with seascapes over the last 12 years. Um, I think it goes back to uh, growing up, going to the ocean. That's what we did for vacation, my family, went to the beach every year. We didn't. We weren't one of these families that went and did lots of different things. We went to the beach. And so I have always associated fun times and family vacations with being at the beach. And so at night that meant playing penny poker and getting ice cream from the ice cream man. But during the day, what we did all day was um, just go down to the beach and go down to the water. And for me, I was in the water all day. And to the point where I would, close my eyes in bed at night and I could literally, the minute I closed my eyes, feel the water. I could, I felt like I was still in the water. And so I think there's a real, there's always been like a real physical connection for me with being in the waves. I just always loved body surfing. And um, so I just, I love, and I still feel that way when I get in the ocean, I feel like I'm 12 years old again. It's just so much fun. I love that sense of play when I'm and when I'm riding those waves. So right now I definitely, I don't do so much body surfing. I need the boogie board. I'm not gonna risk <laughs> getting tossed around by the waves, but it's still just as much fun as it ever was. So uh, I just, I love that feeling of playing. And I think that having spent a lot of time doing things like the, that game jump or dive where you're in the waves and you're looking at a wave coming at you and you have to decide whether to dive underneath it or whether it's gonna crash over you, gives you a much better sense when, as an artist looking at photographs of how a wave is moving. I have been judging waves and how they move for a long, long time. So let's move around the gallery a little bit and I'll show you some of what I've been doing. Uh, this, uh, this one's called Serenity and this is an early morning walk. Um, and let's go this direction a little bit. This is a little, just a little Marsh Reed painting down here, Hidden Secrets. I'd like to show you most of what we have in the gallery here. And I, if, if anybody's interested in anything, uh, we can move over this way. Best thing to do if you're interested in something is to call the gallery. And uh, you can either call or email the gallery. The gallery is info at gallery31 fineart.com. Is that right, Sherry? Gallery 31 Fine Art? Oh, she can't hear me right now. I will give you the information on calling if you want to get in touch with the galleries. And then gallery31capecod.com. Gallery31capecod.com. And email us info at. Yeah, info at gallery31capecod.com. So apparently, uh, bear with us uh, on our video connection. I understand that uh, people can hear us, but um, we are working on the video. So uh, Jeannie will continue to speak, 
and take you through the uh, the gallery. Okay. <clears throat> you want to come over the, and take a look down at this one down here? I wonder why it's the bit, so the video is not working real well. Well, so I think. Saying it's pixelated. You, you look like you're kind of underwater. Oh, well, okay. We don't so want to I look underwater. My, too. Mike, I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you, but, we, you know, before you get through a half hour, see how that is? It's like blurry. That could be, I wonder if that's the Wi-Fi connection or something like that. We can try something here. Except it wasn't like that in this demo. Hmm. So, I'm the interests me when I'm painting waves is the movement of the water in the wave. Um, I really like that feeling of the light passing through the water in a wave. We can move around this direction. Um, so I've been studying how water moves, how the water is flowing, and that's what I'm trying to convey in a lot of my paintings. We'll come around this way, over to this wall. So this is one of these large ones. I've been doing these large panoramic paintings recently. I've done a, quite a few of them. I think this is the 10th one I've done in the last couple of years, and they've been really popular. So, And I just love painting these large pieces. They're a lot of fun to have in the studio because I walk into my studio, and it just kind of makes you feel like a real artist, you know, when you've got this huge painting in front of you on the wall. It's just, it's just a lot. Because, you know, when I'm, whenever I'm in the studio, um, painting a wave, I feel like I'm at the beach. If I'm, it's the next best thing to being there. It's kind of a meditation. It's almost like you're swimming in your studio. So uh, these large ones are really, really fun that way. Here's another one where I've got um, the same kind of movement in the water. Um, a diptych. A, a diptych, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so this one's a diptych. So you've got basically one wave, but it's um, cut into two paintings. It's, it continues from one painting into the next. Yeah, that looks like the video is a little bit better on that. So that one's called Speed 1 and Speed 2 for obvious reasons. I'm trying to get that. That's really what it's all about is the movement in the wave. Um, as you might guess, it gets a little challenging after hundreds of waves to come up with names for these. So I sometimes I'll use song titles, sometimes I'll use poems. I literally have one of the notes on my phone is whenever I think of anything that remotely could be a song title, I mean a, a painting title, I will make a note of it. So I just have an ongoing list of painting titles on my phone. So. Um, and if anyone has any good painting titles and you want to send them to me, I am open to suggestions because I'm always looking for more painting titles. Let's go over here because there's a couple over on this wall. Like and apparently, see. Jeannie, the picture is has improved. Good. So that's good, that's good news. Thank Thanks. You. Okay. So this one, for instance, talking about titles, is called Take Flight. And I, I, I think that connects to just emotion um, because... It's, it's the light that it's all about, and there's this kind of light dancing across the top of it, but it just kind of gives me that feeling of, it just, it's, there's just something joyful about um, looking at the, the water that's all lit up like this, and it just kind of makes your spirit want to soar. So that's where that comes from. And then there's these two quiet little paintings about the marsh down here. Um, I, I, I actually was pretty happy with the title of this one. It's called Hear the Quiet. And because it's so peaceful and you've got this little bit of a disruption in the water, you know that something has just been there and moved along the water to disrupt the surface of it. So, but it's still quiet and peaceful. And then there's another one right next door to it. A couple small paintings right here. Oh, it's also on the back of the magazine. This magazine, Cape Cod, Cape Cod Art Magazine, that cover has a picture of Hear the Quiet on it, too. And there's Hear, Hear the Quiet right yeah. there. And the top, um, would you like uh, Jeannie to explain again the top uh, painting here, please? <clears throat> this is Take Flight. That's the one I was just talking about. This I So one of the things I love about this painting is that light shining through and lighting up um, the, the all the, that that thick water in here. So you've got what's what's interesting about this one to me is you've got 
Um, so you've got the flat plane down here, and then so there's water hitting, or there's light hitting the water from this direction, and then here there's this wall of water with the, the, the wave coming this direction, lights shining through from behind and illuminating it. And then there's also light bouncing up. So the light's kind of at an angle this way, so it's lighting up the water from behind, but then it's also bouncing along the top which is just magical to me. I just love the, the light effects that... Uh, so basically, you, all you have here is water and light, and yet you're getting all of these effects and shapes with just those two elements. I just find it really amazing. So... There it is, take flight. Okay. And this little one has always been one of my favorites. It's called Puddle Jumper. And it's just a really small, intimate scene. It's something that you see whenever you're standing down by the shore. It's just this tiny little bit of a small, quiet wave that's just crashing. But I love the nuances of neutral colors that you get in the shadows where a wave is crashing. And then little bits of shiny reflections as the wave is falling over. Um, and then the traces of bubbles. This is also kind of a fun, this was, this, believe it or not, was a demo from, um, from a workshop, and which I then brought home and developed further and refined, but the wet sand right here is actually just underpainting. For those of you who are aficionados or paint artists yourselves, so this is just, it was wet, past, it was dry pastel that was washed down, and then the dry pastel over it is just these little bubbles. This, this was just the original underpainting. Um, so that's kind of a cool detail Beautiful. on that one. Um, this one up here was also a demo. I love de demo paintings for me always, you know, they, they tend to be some of my favorites. And um, that's because if I'm going to stand in front of a group and do a demonstration, I try to do a really good, uh, I make sure I've got a good reference photo and I do a really good composition first. So I tend to, to get pretty successful demonstrations because I'm trying to set myself up for, for a knockout painting to begin with because I don't want to end up with something that I don't like. This painting, uh, was one that I had done at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston when they had a big exhibit uh, a couple of years ago, the French Pastels exhibit, and they need, they wanted someone to come in and explain what pastels were about. So I uh, started this as a demonstration when I was um, was working with the Museum of Fine Arts. So, but this is actually the scene is Nosset is the dunes uh, looking out uh, at Nosset Beach. So for any of you who are around here in New Orleans, this is a local scene, local, local dunes, and they're just, the dunes around here are just spectacular. Some of my favorite anywhere. So yeah, love the, the light on those dunes. What time is it? How are we doing on time? Anybody know what time it is? We got a, uh, it's about uh, oh, 2.14. Okay. We got plenty of time, okay. Um, so one of the, so we saw the large, the long one, uh, this is a study for a larger painting. So, so this is a 10 by 27. And, and so sometimes before I do these really large ones, I'll do a smaller version and this one's called wave dance. And again, there's your, I did this, is, this felt like sort of like a skirt that's being kicked up. So that's where I came up with the title on this one. Uh, this one, uh, I was really entranced with the foam kicking up above the horizon line. It's called Dawn Breaks. It was an early, early morning painting. Um, and so that's what particularly interested me about that was the early morning light in the sky against the whites of the foam. So one of the, one of the most interesting things about wave paintings is the different colors of white you get in the foam and the way the light hits the water at different times of day. Um, and then on this wall, we have two really different kinds of paintings. Um, a lot of fun. This is, this is Chapin's Beach Road, which is also a local scene, Mayflower Beach in Dennis. And this was one day there'd been a, a, a really, really windy day. I guess that there'd been, maybe it was a rainstorm, I'm not sure, it was definitely very windy. And so all this sand's blowing over the road. The, the water's just right about here, just over that bluff but the sand was almost covering everything and then the sun came back out and it was just beautiful, very sand, wind blown, um, very Cape 
like. And I also just loved the movement of the the telephone poles. Just had it just had a really kind of quintessential Cape feel to it. Uh, and in this piece up here, under the pier, the, the colors of the water and the reflections under the pier, I just was entranced by that. There was It feels like a more abstract piece to me, but it just felt, I, I'm just really interested by the shapes that the pier created and cut through the, uh, the water. So it's just something that I, that I just had to play around with. So that I think it's one of those things, I almost have a hard time when I'm at the beach. I don't know about those of you guys who are artists, um, but I have a hard time uh, everywhere I go, not being distracted by the shapes that I'm seeing and thinking, oh, I need to paint that, oh, I need to paint that. And this day, it was really unbelievable. It was just so beautiful, I couldn't stop taking pictures. Do we have any questions that I need to answer here? Not yet. Okay, good. Here's another that I'd like to point out. There's This is one of the things we can point out, if you can zoom in on this one a little bit closer. This one's called On the Edge. Can you come in a little closer on this Sure, one? easy. Okay, because this is a good one. I like, one of the, my favorite things about this one is the depth when you go into it. Um, the, one, I, those of you who are familiar with my work have probably seen the spray in the foam and that, that I create with the toothbrush. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> um, so we've got a couple of layers going on in a, in a pastel painting. You've got your underpainting, which when you see the darks in here, that's the first thing that goes on in one of my paintings. The darks go on first. Usually it's an under, I'll put a dark layer, then I'll wet it down, and then I'll put the lighter layers on top. And in here, you've got, I put the, you've got the shadows, which are a darker bluish purple, and then the things that come in the foreground, you've got the whites that are kind of curving over. The very last step is to create this spray that's kind of in front of everything. And I do that with a toothbrush. And if you've seen any of my videos, you've probably seen that happen or seen any of my demos. What, what I love about doing that, aside from the fact that it just has that really kind of organic, lively spray look to it, um, it gives a lot more depth because that really looks like it's in front of everything else. So that I, that's probably my favorite thing about this painting is this real feeling of there being a cave there. And I, that's achieved through the different textures going from underpainting to dry pastel to then the wet spray on top. Okay, and then this one here, I this is, uh, a scene from it's called Whisper and I think that's a self-explanatory title because it's such a subtle painting but it's one of my favorites uh, just the the really quiet whisper of the clouds at the top uh, kind of the swoop up of these clouds it was such a beautiful beautiful sunset and uh, I just I was really struck every time you go to Skakit Beach at night, almost every night you get this incredible show of the way the sun, the, the, the way the clouds and the flats interact with each other. The light is just incredible. And that pink light picking up in the sky um, and then reflected into those, the, the water on the flats, it's just an artist's dream. So I've done many paintings of this kind of scene, but this is one of my favorites. All right, let's head down here. All right. Let's zoom in on a couple of these. We just hit some highlights here. <laughs> uh, how about check out this one in the middle? This, one's, I, this one I did during the pandemic just recently, and I called it uh, Finding Space because this was kind of right at the beginning of when we were having to learn the concept of social distancing, and I had this great photo reference of a wide open space of beach. This is actually Nauset Beach. Um, it's just 
it was, I think I, and I, I, it was in the middle of summer, but for some reason, I, I think there were maybe one or two people on the beach that I chose not to put in the, in the painting. <laughs> I don't know why it is that I tend to not put lots of people in my, po in my paintings. I think it's because I would like to have the place all to myself. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, I, I just want to focus on the natural beauty. And as soon as you put people in, the focus goes to the people. So I tend to simplify, and that's one of the ways that I find it easier to simplify and make it more of a narrative. Here's, a, here's actually a, a, I'll let you zoom in on that for a second. I'm gonna show you this one small painting. Here's one where the people are in the photo, and not in the photo, in the painting. This little one is called Sunset on the flat. So that's the same place that I was just talking about. And I included the people in this painting for a very specific reason, because they give scale to the scene. They tell a story, and it was just sort of this sense of awe of being there and watching the sunset. And here's another scene of the flats, but very abstracted. I loved the pattern and the repetition and the patterns of the sun and the water on the Brewster Flats. Oh, right, there's one over here. Um, All right. Okay, so let's, let's go back let's go in over here. here. Uh, can you? Zoom well, on actually, would you like to stand next to it? Okay, <laughs> I'll stand next to it. Okay. Yes. So, this one is called Echoes, and it's one of uh, in the new series I've been working on, where I'm really zoomed into the waves, where I get you uh, you get the feeling that you're actually swimming, or you 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 could just dive right in. So I want you to get that feeling of being able to see the or, or almost feel and taste the water. Uh, it's called Echoes because this kind of reminds me of a conch shell, where it's got that sort of that feeling or that shape of a conch shell, so that where you could pick it up and hear the water in the shell. So that's where that comes from. The reference photo for this one is so zoomed in that the reference photo is actually uh, really, really blurry, and I had to infer a lot of the information from it. Uh, but I, I had a lot of fun with this one because the colors are a little bit more neutral and a little bit, uh, just a little different than what, I'm, what I've usually worked with. So it's been fun to change up the, um, the palette a little bit. Uh, and then I like the format of this one going a little bit bigger. It's called Upward Sweep, uh, just the liquid and the energy and the flow. This is from when I was doing a residency up in Gloucester. And this was just after a hurricane, which is really, uh, anybody who paints waves knows that's the absolute best time to get references, reference photos. Um, Very got, powerful. Yeah. Thanks. There's two large ones on this wall. This one's called uh, Walking on Sunshine. And I just, I'm, I'm just totally in love with the light effect that this wave had. Uh, so that's what I was trying to convey here is the bounce light on the inside rim of this wave. Um, I just, these colors always entrance me. Convey in the case. title. Con sorry? Convey in the title, yeah. Walking on Sunshine? Yeah, Walking on Sunshine. Just the, that, the, bounce, the bounce light from, from down here up to there and kind of jumping along the top of that. That's where, so that's just another example of how titles... Sometimes songs will just come into my head. It's a happy song, and the, the idea of walking along the sunshine um, just seemed like it worked. Uh, and then this one's called Momentum, and that's really about the motion and power behind and inside of any wave. So that's, that's really what that one's about, and I love the color uh, inside a really translucent, clean water wave, which that one really was. All right, let's zoom in on these titles. So one of the things that's a little hard to convey in a, in a video is the iridescence 
that sometimes I've got in some of these waves. I don't see it in this particular one. Um, let's see if I can find one of those. We'll have to. I'll have to see if, if we can find. While you're doing that, doing that, we will yeah. zoom in on some of these titles. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. We've got one, Mike. Yep. All right. So. If if you want to come over here for a second, I think Sherry, if you can push the light on this, that'd be great. So this one's called Power Play, and I was just starting to talk a little bit about the iridescence. So one of the things that I like to do is um, throw in periodically, and I don't do it every time, but, but often I'll use, there's a couple of pastels that have a little bit of an iridescent quality to them. Um, Terry Ludwig has an iridescent, very pale blue. Diane Townsend makes some. Uh, the Henri Rocher now makes some iridescence. And there's a little bit of iridescence here, and I don't know if you can see it um, on that or not. There's, but some of this blue has iridescence to it. The nice thing about the iridescence is they give this quality. It's almost hard to see unless you're seeing it in person, but it gives a sparkle in certain areas. It's something that you wouldn't want to do everywhere, all over the pastel. It's sort of like putting sprinkles on top of your ice cream sundae. You don't want too many of them, but a few is going to add a little bit of pop to the painting. So they add an extra dimension, and it's something that you can do to pastel that you can't do in any other medium. So it's kind of cool. So this one's called Power Play. It's 20 by 40. Okay. I think, Sherry, I'm going to hand this back to you since we're moving it around. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can catch this from, I think, the other side across here. So we'll just take a look at this one from here. One's called Simple Joy. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys feel this way or not, but sometimes just the color, what, what really filled me with that emotion with this one was just the color of that water in the foreground. Every time I go to the beach and see that rich kind of blue, purpley blue reflected in wet sand, I just, it's, I could just stay at the beach all day just looking at that color. That's my favorite color. So that's where that title comes from. And then we have a couple remaining pieces here. So this one is called Blush. And we've got uh, what struck me here, this was late afternoon. The sun was just about to set. And you've got this just bare suggestion of pink on the white waves. And the, the way they shimmered on this water was, was really what I was trying to capture there. Um, and then a couple of little ones here. You can zoom in and see those. And then I want to take you at the very end to, uh, to the title piece of the show. Oh, right, and then we've got another big one, too. <laughs> I forgot. We, there's so much to cover. Thank you so much for your comments, everybody. This is so nice. Thanks. I'm not able to see a lot of them as I'm going along. <laughs> you would I'm, get seasick. I'm, I'm, right. I'm not in front of the camera, but I'm catching your names, and it's so great to have you here. I wish you were here in person. Um, okay. We do have one question. Oh, what is it? Uh, from Vivid uh, Idonato Art. And I hope I'm not butchering that too much. <laughs> Can you tell us something about the technique of each painting? Um, okay, I can tell you something. In this, I assume in this particular show. 
Yeah, so I, I really do have more or less, let's come around this way so we're looking at one of the paintings. So, so this, there, here's another six, 20 by 60. I do really, whether they're tiny or large, I really do use the same technique pretty much every time, the, a very similar technique. So I, this, the paper is sanded, it's, it's soft pastel. So I start out, once I've got my design, which I do with a thumbnail, I start out with one layer of dry pastel for the big simple shapes, and then I wash it down with alcohol. So I set in my initial design, basically with my big shapes in the right values um, with alcohol. So they're, they're set in there dissolved um, with, the, um, with alcohol. So once that's in, then I can add layers and refine. I, the, the, next, the next step, once the alcohol is, the underpainting is down there with the alcohol, then I'll go back in with a, a white charcoal pencil and redraw. And the white charcoal pencil is really terrific with waves because that can stay a part of the painting. The, the whites can show through and be a, part, a linear part of the painting. Then I just start adding layers. And the nice thing about pastel is you can, uh, it, really it's all about broken color. It's all about adding layers of colors together and they mix visually. So the more layers the, that you add, the more complexity you're adding to the painting. So uh, it's, it's just a question of knowing when to stop, really. So that's, that's really it. You do the underpainting, you, you redraw, and then you just keep adding more until you've gone too far. <laughs> then you brush a little bit of off. I do actually do one of the other big things that I've been doing a lot more recently is dry brush, brushing things off. So I, I add on and then I, then I erase. For instance, looking here in this section right here of this painting, you see this right in here? That is dry brush pulling off painting. So I use brushes in my work quite a bit where I, I've, this is, there's underpainting. I've, I've put in a layer of greens, like sea gray greens, and then I put whites on top and then I go in with a dry brush and pull some off, pull it away to reveal what's underneath. So that's, it's not just fixing a mistake, it's actually part of the process to create the right textures and shapes. So, uh, and I do the same thing in here where I'll, I'll dry brush off, I'll put on the foam, and then I'll dry brush off to create these swirls in the foam. So, so that's pretty much all there is to it. And then we have one more painting I want to share with you before I wrap up. We did the title, correct? The title painting? We didn't do that yet, I don't uh, think. Or did we? No, I don't believe we did. It's right there. There we go. So. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe we have featured the title painting. We have not. So let's see, it's right here. It's called Ebb and Flow. So one of the things I particularly enjoyed about this painting was, as you'll notice, the, the palette on this one is a little bit of a departure from the others. It's, there's, there's more purples, and it's purples and the greens in the water, and then the, the sand. So it's, it's sort of the um, secondary colors, the purple, green, and orange. So it's, it was really fun to work on this because it's, it just took me out of my normal comfort, comfort zone with what I'm used to in my palette. And it was, it's just always fun to do that because when you work, work with a, when you really get in depth with a particular uh, subject matter like this, the colors tend to stay within the same range, which, which is great because they're more or less my favorite colors, but it's really kind of nice to push it in different directions every now and then. So it's, it, this, I don't see myself getting tired of this subject anytime soon. I feel like the more I paint seascapes, the more I understand them, and I just keep learning more uh, all the time. I get a deeper understanding every year. It just keeps getting a little bit more nuanced all the time. And so I've just found it to become more and more interesting. Um, so I don't see, I don't see any change. I see changes coming, but I don't see that I'm, I don't, certainly don't expect to get bored with this anytime soon. I just need more painting titles. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate your being here. Great to see your names on here and I hope to see you in person sometime soon. And Jeannie, uh, before we sign off. Oh, did I show that little, I don't think I showed the little thing. We I, still have time. Yeah. Let me introduce Sherry real quick.
This is Sherry. She's the gallery let's, owner. Let's go stand in front of some of your paintings. Come oh, here. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have another question, Sherry. Okay. Uh, timely and appropriate that you join in. All right. Thank Are you. all the this is from uh, Lisa Nugent? Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, we both know are, Lisa. Yes. Are all the paintings on Gallery Thirty One's website? Yes, they are. All right. And they're on Jeannie's page, which is the first artist page. So if you go, Lisa, to Gallery Thirty One Cape Cod dot com, which is what Jeannie is holding right here. And you click on artists. The top artist is Jean Rosier Smith. You click on that and scroll down, and there's almost 50 paintings of Jeannie's there with their titles and prices, etc. All right. Um, I have another question. Okay. Um, uh, this is from Debbie uh, Huchin. Uh, H O. Hi, Debbie. All right. Um, white charcoal pencil or white pastel pencil? You can use either one. I like the white charcoal pencils better. They're a lot easier to sharpen. All right. You can use that a lot when you go back into a painting yeah. after you do the underpainting. Yeah, that's what I use for drawing. Yeah. All right. I'm trying to see if we're caught up on questions. Well, I apologize that this is taking a little bit longer, but I want to uh, appreciate Appreciate everyone who has taken the time to not only tune in, but uh, also take the time to ask questions. Yeah. Well, it's turned into a beach day here. In I Orleans. know. It didn't start yeah. out one today, but that's typical. Uh, okay. okay, Wendy uh, Pesker. Uh-huh. Hi, Wendy. Does Jeannie offer prints of her work? Uh, I really don't. I'm not really doing prints. Um, I have, there's a few. There's a very few available on Fine Art America, but that they're they're older. I, I don't really have any prints. That's just not. I pretty much I'm only doing um, originals right now. All right. Yeah. The gallery only sells original art. We don't yeah. sell any prints. Got it. I think that is it. Um, Jeannie, would you like to? Uh, once we sign off here, there's still a way to get a hold of you, uh, reach out to you, uh, especially on Instagram, even though we're yeah. not live uh, and the broadcast is over, there are ways to uh, reach out to you and maybe ask you something that you saw here on this Instagram live presentation. Sure, you can send me a message, a direct message me on Instagram is, is, a, is a great thing to do or send me a message. Uh, you, can, you can send me a message via my website too. So, uh, Sure. My website, genierosiersmith.com. So there's a there's a message, uh, there, there's a way to contact me on that, just on the contact sheet. On the, that's probably the best thing to do. Or just in, my Instagram, which you probably have if you're watching this, right? It's yes. Jeannie Roger Smith. Yep. Either one. Uh, Feel free to right. ask me a question if you need to. Absolutely. And I, for the, go ahead, Sherry. The years that Gallery 31 Fine Art in Orleans on Cape Cod has been honored to represent my good friend Jean Roser Smith. Um, we've had a lot of fun and we have. brought a lot of joy and yeah. a lot of beautiful wet art created <laughs> with a dry as a dry. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. And it, it really is. Um, Jean's work, I've, you know, I was president of the Pastel Painter Society of Cape Cod for a number of years, and I have seen a lot of pastels, but there's nothing like seeing them up close and personal, and some of the nuances, and Mike, I thank you for all your camera work today, and Jeannie, all your explanations, but there's just nothing like the real thing, baby. So, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. you know, the gallery does book, um, COVID friendly, if that's, or co social distancing appointments online um, so that you don't have to be here when other people are. And we'll make those in the evening, we'll make them early in the morning, whenever. So, um, and Jeannie's exhibit will, is a solo show and it'll be up for the next few weeks. So thank you so much. All right, uh, Jeannie, any final words? No, I'm just really thankful that you guys came and showed up. It's really nice to see you virtually here and um, and get in touch with me if you have any more questions. I'd love to hear from you. Bye.